You've probably watched numerous movies about time travel. Usually, what happens is that some characters travel back to a historical time in the past, and then they start to relive that time period again. But have you ever wondered what it's like if you get inserted into a previous time and then you start to live the time period backward in reverse? That's what the movie Tenant presents. So in this video, I'm not going to spoil any of the plot of the movie. It focuses on the physics concept, which I think is always what makes Christopher Nolan's movie so fascinating. And I think what's so unique about Tenant is that it ties the concept of time travel to the concept of entropy. Entropy is a measure of disorder or chaos in the universe. The second law of thermodynamics states that just like energy is always flowing from hot objects to cold objects, at the microscopic level, everything is constantly changing from order towards chaos. And we can see this from phenomena such as creams blending to coffee, glass shattering, and air particles diffusing in a contained space. We don't ever see these things go in reverse. So then what's significant about the second law of thermodynamics is that it kind of informs the arrow of time and tells you which direction time is traveling. So then with this motion, we are seeing, again without giving out any spoilers, we see that it's not just about people and objects moving backward in motion, but also you will see reverse of explosion, air diffusion, and instead of getting burned, you get hyperthermia. So the question becomes, is time reversal equal to entropy decrease? And one way we can think about it is this. Entropy increase is something that we can perceive, but time is abstract. It's more like a construct or a derived variable. In the book, The Order of Time, there is a quote that says, In a world without time, there must still be something that gives rise to the time that we are accustomed to, with this order, with this past that is different from the future. So it is that because we want to be able to track the speed of what we observe, whether it's the decaying of things or the aging process, and also that we see the cycle of day and nights and seasons that we came up with the measure of time. So from that perspective, we could say that yes, time is made to mark entropy increase and then theoretically you could reverse the same timeline back through entropy decrease, even though it's only supposed to increase. However, there is another underlying condition, which is that the probabilistic events are actually deterministic in both directions. So that gets to the million dollar question, right? Do we have free will? As we move forward in time from each moment to the next, do we think that the system is randomly picking one spot on the probability curve to determine the configuration of the next moment? Or is that not random? If it's not, then you can traverse back through timeline the same way it unfolds the first time. But if it is random, which is to say that if we do have free will, then theoretically, the moment you traverse back through timeline, you're resetting that probability and everything shuffles and you may not even exist anymore. In fact, the further back you travel to, the less likely you are exactly where you are right now. And just to make this whole thing even more complicated, you can also look at the probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics through the famous double slit experiments. So we know that light acts like both particles and waves, and this is demonstrated by Thomas Young's experiment. When a light source passes through two slits, there's an interfering pattern in the back. Um, and even when people try to control the laser beams such that only one photon passes through each time, which supposedly forcing it to come out like particles, it still interferes. So this further proves its wave-particle duality even at atomic level. What's more astonishing is the subsequent experiments with detectors involved. So essentially, if people put two sensors at the slits to detect which one the photon passes through, then the interfering pattern actually disappears. It's almost as if if a photon knows that it's being watched, then it changes its behavior and turn out to be more like a particle. There are different theories to explain why this would happen, and the most famous one is the Copenhagen interpretation of the wave function collapse. What it's saying is that by by putting a sensor there, you're changing the nature of the wave function. So originally, it did not have a physical nature, it was just pure possibility. But the moment you try to observe or measure it, it collapses into a concrete physical form. 
Given it's hard to prove that by putting these sensors there, it's not fundamentally changing the nature of this whole experiment, people were then asking, well, so what if we measure the path of a photon after it has passed through the slit panel? So there are several scientists that later attempted this. Um, so there is a Willer's double slit device with delayed choice. And there's also a later experiment by Kim and others that's called delayed choice quantum eraser. Without going into too much details of the mechanisms of the designs, which I'll put the links down below if you want to read more about it, just know that these setups allow the scientists to retrospectively detect the path of the photons after they've passed through the slits, and this also allows them to turn on and off whether the pass is being detected. Perhaps by this point, you can already guess how crazy the result is, which is that when the detector is turned on, it shows a simple diffraction pattern with no interference. And then when the detector is turned off, the interfering pattern comes back. And this is quite scary because it's almost like if a photon later realizes it's being observed, it can go back in time and retrospectively alter its previous behavior at the slits. If this is true, then perhaps too late, time is not real, or it's just a part of its projected possibilities encompassing all of its possible paths. So then what does the observer effect say about our understanding of reality? Do we live in a deterministic world, or are we actually living in a wave function that supports multiple parallel realities, and it's only by us observing that we are selecting a single path to make sense of time and fill in the gaps of how we got here? I will leave that question to you guys. Regardless, Tenant is a great movie and I hope you enjoyed it. And I also hope that I didn't just make the whole thing more complicated. Or maybe I did, in which case I really appreciate you sticking it out this far. So I make other similar videos on the topics of human consciousness. Do check it out if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.